A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough that you weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. The word of the Lord. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Dominos vobiscum. Lectio Sancti Evangelii secundum Lucam. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. 
He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Verbum Domini. In the season of Advent, the prophets of the Old Testament are guides for the coming of the Lord. The prophets call us back to God's promises. They call us back to the covenant. Particularly, the prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah pave the way for who is to come. Jeremiah speaks of a new covenant. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with the fathers of the day that I took them by hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, declares the Lord, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel on after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. From the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31. John the Baptist was the herald of the great king, the forerunner. He was prophesied by Isaiah I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare a way, a voice of the one calling out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. From the dawn of creation, God has sought communion with his creatures, the creator with his creatures. So in creation, God creates Adam, and then he creates Eve out of the rib of Adam. And we all know what happens when sin enters the picture, the original sin. Communion is broken between God and man, between his creation, and chaos starts to enter the world. 
So there is this infinite chasm between God and man and his creatures. John Paul II speaks of this as original solitude, original holiness, and original justice, that there was complete harmony between God and man. There was nothing standing in the way. There was no obstacle standing in the way between our relationship with God, our relationship with one another, our, our interior life was completely ordered, and man's dominion over creation was perfect. Now imagine what that might be like, to have perfect communion. First of all, again, perfect communion with God, perfect communion with one another, love of one's neighbor, Perfect communion within ourselves, completely integrated. No original sin, no concupiscence, no draw to sin, and perfect order within God's creation. I'd like for you to imagine what that might look like. That's what we strive for in grace and is made possible to us in grace through the sacraments. The prophet Hosea and others speak of a marriage bond with the Lord. And I will betroth you to me forever. And I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice in steadfast love and in mercy. I will betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. God is faithful. We have a Father who keeps his promises. Time after time again, prophets call us back to the covenant, the promises that God has made to us of old, but we always have to renew within us this covenant that God has made with us, that he's made with creation, that he's made with his creatures. God promises restoration and protection through the prophets. Prophet Isaiah says, but now says the Lord God, who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. You are mine. He calls us to this marriage bond. That's what a covenant is in its essence. It's a marriage bond between the Lord and his creation. Prophet Isaiah says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, there shall not overwhelm you. Prophesying imagery of the waters of baptism. What happens to us when we are made new creations in God? When water is poured over us and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is poured over us, we are made new, new creations. The Lord God says, you, you will walk through fire and you will not be consumed or burned, and the flame shall not consume you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel your Savior. Central to this covenant, this covenant relationship with God, was the awareness that God chose Israel to be not just subject people, not just a people, a God, and then 
people subject to him like slaves, but God wanted in, to enter into a covenant relationship with his people. He wanted to know his people, and he wanted his people to know him. He wanted Israel to be a spouse, a partner, a friend with whom he would communicate and make himself known and whose prayers and needs he would promise. He would keep his promises and he would make himself available, completely available to his people. This is what God wants to do for his people create a marriage bond, to be completely available to his people. And the prophets call us back to this reality over and over and over again when this covenant is broken. The prophets recall the Lord's mercy and love and acknowledge Israel's frequent unfaithfulness to the covenant. And this is where John the Baptist enters into the picture. John the Baptist is the herald of the great king who brings together the Old Testament and the New Testament. He is the one, the voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. So going back to the beginning of creation, God desired a response from his people, a perfect response from his people, perfect obedience, perfect listening, obedience, perfect docility to God's will, a perfect yes. This perfect yes was personified in Mary, there was nothing in her, no obstacle in her that posed a threat from communion with God. She was perfectly unstained from sin. And in her, God found a spouse completely docile, completely ready, completely open to do his will. Be it done unto me according to your word. She was a complete and open vessel to God's will. That's why today we celebrate in a very unique way, Our Lady of Loretto. Now, I don't have time to explain all of the interesting history about how the House of Nazareth was transported to Loretto, Italy. You can look that up yourself. There's been many studies on this, archaeological evidence, in this, but regardless, it was miraculous. A miraculous transference from the place of Nazareth, this house of Loretto, the house of Nazareth to this little town of Loretto. The reason I bring all this up is in this house of Loretto, the Annunciation was made, the Annunciation of the Lord. The angel Gabriel came to a house, to a town of Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. This house is where Mary said, Yes, on behalf of all of creation, on behalf of you and me. She says yes. 
she gives the perfect response back to God and keeps that promise throughout her life and grows in faith and hope and in love. I bring this all up because each one of us must renew within us our own promises that we have made to God. God is waiting for a response from us, his people. And what will our response be back to God? Mary gives us the perfect model of what a response to God looks like. Perfect. Now, will we ever have that type of response to God in our life? I, I hope so. That's what we strive for. Perfect communion with God. Both interior and exterior in the way we live and in the way we think and in the way our heart moves. This is Mary's interior life. That's why we call upon her as Our Lady of Loretto today and ask her for a deeper faith as we approach Christmas. This is the house where the word was made flesh. December 25th is a celebration of when when the word was made flesh and he is given birth, a virgin birth. But the Annunciation, March 25th, was the moment that heaven touched earth. The moment when that chasm, again, which was infinite because of original sin, the moment when that chasm was married to the earth in Mary, in her womb, perfectly. She's the perfect receptacle, the perfect response to God's plan. What will our response to God be this Christmas? Be it done unto me according to your word.